What's good? This is Nabil, owner of Nab's Running Back Holdout, and you are watching Inside the Rosita League. Hope you all had a good weekend, and I know that I had a nice weekend of reset here. And speaking of reset, I probably need to reset my whole fantasy lineup. It's uh, it's not looking good for me at all. It's not. That I blame bad. the deal. I mean, I think your I think your points against is rough. I mean, I saw that. Yes. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Oh, you. Hey, Nabs. It's. Great that you joined us, and it was a cool matchup against you. So the better team won. Congratulations! Thank you, David. I appreciate it. I mean, I, you you put up a you put up a fight. You had me worried for a bit there. <laughs> it's just great that you're in the league. I think this is your fourth season in uh, in the Rosita League. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, you probably know better than me. I was going to say third or fourth, so I, I believe you. Yeah, well, I, I know that you joined. Uh, right when James took over as the commish in the year that I wasn't able to do much work with this league. Actually, I know that there is a cool story that, that happened right before the season began in, in which you ended up being in the league just right about a week before we started. I'll, I'll ask both of you. what. So what happened? What led up to that? Okay. I'm going to defer to you, James. I don't I don't know if I remember. I remember you <laughs> asking me, and I was like, yeah, I'm stoked. I'd be happy to join, but... I don't remember why this spot opened or anything. Yeah, I forget who left, but I, I had to fill the roster. But uh, I think it was Chris John. To, okay, it was John. That's right. So we had a last minute odd number, and then um, Nabil is just the uh, obvious choice for me there because <laughs> he'd have to. He couldn't say no. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't say no. You know, loyalty to James. I've I've known him for years now. You know, when when he asked, I had to come through for him. You know, well, it all worked out for sure. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. It's 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 been four fun years for sure. I think this is going to be my year, though. I I think this is the year I I take home the ship. Okay, all and right. You heard it here first. Yeah. yeah. What's your yeah. What's your favorite part about this particular league? What What do you think sets this league apart from some of the other ones you've been in? If anything. Oh man, I mean, I, I think that people care a heck of a lot in this league about every game. You know, every matchup seems to be like the, like the Super Bowl for some people. And obviously, the work you put in, David, in terms of your your production quality and putting on the videos and like doing the recaps and sending the emails out every week, I think that's what keeps us all going. Like, I know I watch the videos as soon as they come out every Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday. I, I I make sure I watch them every week. So. Yeah, I, you know, I'm in a I'm in other leagues where it's like people don't set their lineups or like people don't do the waiver pickups, things like that. But you know, Rosita League is serious, so it makes it a lot more fun to be a part of. Oh, that's very nice of you. Although I will say that I think there are times when people in our league still kind of, uh, on a rare occasion, forget to set their lineups. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I like you said, I think people do care uh, in general. I know that a lot of, a lot of what we do a lot of what James and I do. I think some of it's a little tongue in cheek. We make it, we make it a, a little more epic than things really are. But I think magnifying that uh, with how it's a, also a, a family league, family and friends league, uh, there is a lot more at stake than just money. I guess. Yeah, I guess it's one that's way to put true. It. Yeah, you the do a great job. All that so. matters. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Well, having said that, Nabil, is there anything that you would suggest for improving or, or tweaking anything in the league? Oh, I don't know. I think I think the Rosita League is great. You know, I think uh, James and I were talking this weekend about, you know, we wish more trades would happen, right? But I, I think a lot of that just has to do with, you know, people taking this league so seriously. Nobody wants to feel like they're getting ripped off, right? So you're more hesitant to make a trade. Um, you know, I think sure the vetoes have something to do with it for sure. But I think, you know, but I'd love to see more trades. I would love to see more kind of mid season action. So I don't know if there's a way to get that going. 
Ah, oh, boy. Yeah, I think part of the problem is I, I think there are some people in the league, and, and this is my, this might have been alluded to last week in the interview we did with Chris. I think there are some people that are um, – they want kind of a more democratic uh, system where the – where any trade that goes through should be scrutinized, uh, you know, to the T. And now I'm of the opinion that maybe this league is a little too uh, too stringent in that. I think that, you know, it's kind of like if people, people are playing Monopoly. Is there going to be a rule saying every single trade is going to be vetoed or voted on? So, you know, I'm, I'm fine with where things are at. I, if it helps... People uh, have peace of mind that things are as fair as they can be. I'm, I'm cool with that. But it's getting to the point where uh, I think people can take advantage of that, too. You know, that's the other side of the coin. You, they can round up a group of five or six people and say, let's just veto everything that we have that that's in sight. So I think that may be part of it. Yeah. And I think, you know, definitely one one change I would like to see is some sort of handicap against James. Like, it just feels like, you know, he needs something to go against, against him. Like, maybe a minus five points every week so he's not making the Rosita be league finals every year. That'd be nice to see. James, what's, what's your points? <laughs> I lost by four. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking like a, a, a just like a five point handicap every week going into it for you. I think that would just make it fair for the rest of us. <laughs> Nabs, you've uh, had some very uh, interesting exposure with in, in your career, and especially with that Seattle Times article that uh, was released. I believe it was earlier this year. So you're getting uh, a bit of exposure around the city. But you're still one of those the most humble people I know. But one of the deep questions that I would ask for you is, but <laughs> is is playing a fantasy sport, whether it's the Rosita <laughs> League or any other league or any other fantasy uh, sport other than fantasy football, do you think it's a good exercise for any area of the business or businesses that you are a part of? Yeah, yeah, no question, and I appreciate you you saying that, David. I. Um, I definitely think that it, it's important to, uh, um, you know, stay true to yourself, right? Regardless of what what the outside situation is. Um, but I think for for fantasy specifically, there's so many aspects to it. I mean, that you have your general like math, business, finance side of it, where you're like, hey, you got to make data driven decisions every week, right? You can't be emotional about it. You can't just continue to go with your your gut every time. You got to make data driven decisions, and I think. You know, if, if you do that in fantasy, you're probably going to win if you're a little bit more analytical. But then there's also the people aspect of it. Like we were talking about the trades a minute ago. We were talking about, you know, the, the last time we spoke, it was the draft, right? So it's like, you know, if I draft this person, what do I know about, you know, who I'm up against? Are they going to take this guy next? Or is he going to be available to me, you know, by the time I get there? So that's what makes fantasy fun, that it's not just analytical. It's not just the math on like who's going to score points, but like what are what's your opposition going to do, right? Who Who's somebody going to put a waiver wire pick on? Like you got to account for that stuff along with the data. And the people aspect of it is, is just as important to recognize in fantasy as it is in business, I think. Yeah, I, I think also uh, with the advent of artificial intelligence you know we're kind of already well into the start of the era let's just put it that way and how does that creep into fantasy football do you think it's going to have an effect on the way people set their lineups or do you think uh it's not going to have uh too much effect as time goes on yeah, I mean, the availability of data is huge, right? And I think AI is going to make that more and more prevalent. It's going to, uh, you know, allow people to kind of create more dynamic projections, I think, than just what we have right now. Um, I think the the better the technology gets, the easier it's going to be for us to say like, okay, but what about in this situation? What about the fact that they're playing in snow this week? How's that going to impact, you know, these projections here? And who are we going to expect to go up or down? So better data is always a good thing. I think it's going to allow those people that are a little bit more 
able to read that data and a little bit more analytically minded to have more of an advantage. Where right now, you know, if you think about it, anybody can look at projections. It doesn't matter if you have any football knowledge or not. And you can decide like, yeah, I think this is the right play 80% of the time. And then there's, of course, the folks that really know the game of football that can act, that are actually watching the games that are making decisions beyond just kind of what the numbers are, are that are in front of them. But yeah, I think AI is just going to provide that kind of third component of just like, okay, here's your basic projection. Here's what I'm seeing out on the game right now, like as I'm watching, but also now here's kind of like what I'm asking the AI to tell me about this game and kind of using that to your advantage. So um, we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if within the next couple of years, the the tools we use to evaluate players completely change. And then a lot of people in our league are going to just be in cruise control once you get to that. Here's where I think the limit is in AI and fantasy sports. Because the games themselves are not artificial, again, it's people, like you said, that are playing the game, and that's where it stops. And so you can do 10,000 uh, virtual projections on how the game's going to turn out, but it's not going to... You can only do so much of that, but well, but the people playing the game, it's not an artificial intelligence game. It's a real game. So I think that's that's where the limit is with AI and fantasy. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like what, what is the, you know, advantage that Taylor Swift is giving Travis Kelsey every week? Like, how do you account for that in terms of points and like a percentage, right? That's and a whole is hour. Or any yeah. AI able to look for that? Yeah. It's the Taylor effect. Like that's an extra five points for me every week right now. So I'll take it. Probably not. Not I, until the cheat dumps yeah. them. <laughs> and then and then after she dumps him, then she's going to come out with a song called Tight Endings. <laughs> Tight Endings. I like that. I like that a lot. Well done, David. There you go. Hey, Nabil, it's just an honor to have you in our league, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the finals, James. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. Night, Nabs. Good night. Cool interview. Very uh, insightful. Yeah, he's always got a lot of insightful things to say, but also in a very humble way. Um, James. All right, so the first match we'll start out with is uh, Seattle KBA, 145 over Team Mara, 93. Another low-scoring output for Mark and Sarah. Yeah, they've been um, they've been struggling the past uh, couple weeks. There, they started pretty strong, but uh, have had trouble, especially since buy hits and uh, Cooper Cup's back. So Nakua is seeing uh, you know less targets as you'd expect. Um, yeah, and uh, they're struggling pretty hard in the running back department, which the same cannot be said for Kristen. <laughs> their average. Of- point scored per game is above 140 and lo and behold they they put up a 145 yeah so there is a lot of consistency here and more consistency in this three and three team than you could see anywhere else they have the highest total point score out of everyone now Mm -hmm. yeah they're looking pretty strong taking into a like Last couple of weeks, they might be the the strongest looking one now. Think so? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think so. Projected West two seed. I had to click and see what you had them at. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. All right. Next one is a come from behind win for Andrew over DC. A heartbreak loss for DC. Yep. Big time Monday night comeback for Andrew. And uh, man, DC, he got his first lot win, I mean, and he, he almost looked like he was going to get something going, get a little momentum. Earlier in the weekend, your dad told me that he possibly regretted not putting McLaurin in the starting lineup. 
<laughs> uh, now, gonna, um, let, let's queue up that wah 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 thing um, mm -hmm. for Uncle Dwayne not putting in uh, McLaurin. Tough luck, man. Yeah, I mean, you can't start him over Adams. Honestly, you can't start him over Higgins either, but Higgins would have been the one he might have. Um, yeah, that's tough. I hate to lose a close one. But Andrew, um, back on the winning train at least, uh, defending that number one spot in the West. It was Tony Pollard, who whose seventeen point score on Monday night put Andrew over the top. So Seattle Felix back in the number one slot in the West Division for now. Now on the East Division, Town Business pulls out another win, scoring only one hundred five points, but with a six point win over Middle Child. So this was a winnable game for. John and Noah, and they almost pulled off a great upset against town business, but just wasn't meant to be. Yeah, it's uh, hard to hard to win when the running backs aren't there for you. I'm trying to figure out Damian Pierce. I think it's Singletary in Houston might be the guy taking Damian Pierce's carries, but either way, 99 no good. Yeah, well, he's always going to go from single digit to single Terry. <laughs> there you go. Well, but but the W is the most important stat for Town Biz. Congratulations, mm -hmm. five and one. Way to C go! I think CMC is hurt. I haven't heard the latest on on that, but um, considering he is the questionable, okay, as of Monday night, I think apparent or Tuesday night, and um, yesterday he was supposed to have had an MRI on his oblique ribs area or whatever, but they haven't released any data, so we're not going to have any clues going into uh, you know Tuesday waiver claim time. Well, there you go. Well, okay, uh, next one, Super Scrubs with a six point loss. To Mike, another close game in the east side there. A lot of close games this week. I think it's and, the one uh, the one point from Acres surely didn't help out Omar and Jake. No. No. I mean 110, not bad this deep in the bye weeks, but they're still um suffering from Justin Jefferson being on uh, in injured reserves. And uh, yeah, as you said, Akers was not a good fill-in. Tyreek doing big things for Mike. Yep, he's pretty consistent. There. Five and one. Five Mike and one. Is, Mike's back in where he usually is, in the top tier. Yep. All right, 107 to 103, Sadis Steelys over you. Four point loss. In, Four point uh, loss. Well, this should have been your win. And I think you know why. It was Keenan Allen. He was wide open, I think twice. And in Two one or of three them, times. Yeah. He <laughs> should have had a touchdown in, in one of them if the ball had just been thrown accurately, which would have easily put you over the top here. As it stands, this goes down as a game that you should have won, but didn't get. <laughs> Thanks, so how do, so how does it feel to have such a disappointing loss you know it's pretty rough um but for how my season's been going i think four and two is pretty good so i'm just going to be thankful there next week's going to be tough i have like four or five players on bye week both my running backs so i was hoping to win this week give myself a little cushion for next week but it looks like i'm gonna have to get the dub next week against andrew um here's my i might have started kirk over hopkins but when i woke up sunday morning hopkins was already locked in because they were playing like in europe or whatever because so I was the oversight on my part. I mean, I wasn't oh, no. sure gonna swap them, but I was planning to consider it that morning. <laughs> so there's a second variable that did that did not go your way. Yeah, you know. And I was uh, hoping Alan would have uh, made up for it, but uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, you had some tough, very similarly tough losses last year. I think three weeks in a row, and I know that I poked fun at you about that at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's highly unlikely you're, that's going to happen to you three weeks in a row this season. 
So fingers crossed, hoping to get back on track. I know it's not looking like it, but I think I get, you know, I'm still playing for uh first in the East. You are. Your backup you're... plan, make the playoffs. <laughs> okay. I like that backup plan. Team Stubblefield, 107 over the rating champs, 86. And all of a sudden, Ooh. Rich and June are looking very uh, beatable this year. Yeah. All of a sudden is right. And um, Lisa, you know, put up a strong a strong game against the grind. I was worried even if the grind got 86, they might still win this week. But uh, Team Stubblefield showing up. Well, Lisa has turned the grind into the ground. That's what it's looking <laughs> like here. <laughs> so congratulations to Lisa uh, making waves in her first year back after a, a little bit of a hiatus. Dak Prescott and AJ Brown did some big things for her team this past weekend. Absolutely. Eagles looking good, except for they lost. Side note, I think the Eagles, yeah, so no more undefeated teams in the NFL. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, just as well. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, Nabs had a very big win, a uh, divisional win over me, 139-97. to Nabs is right there where he wants to be. He is now in, uh, at, le- at least as of now, in the uh, top three slot in the west side. Yeah, top three slot, and he's got a good, other than um, Kristen, he's got a pretty good two to- total points for for any uh, potential tiebreaker needs on his end. So he's in a great spot. Yes. Well, it turns out, obviously, Travis Kelsey, Nabs's pick in the first round, ended up working for him just fine. So no Possibly harm, no foul. In part, thanks to Taylor Swift. <laughs> there you go. Never know. <laughs> now, on my end, uh, I think uh, one uh, one thing I will say about my team is that whenever I look in – the fantasy football news or the main sites that talk about injuries, all my players seem to be on them uh, every single week now. So it's uh, it's looking very bleak uh, at one and five. The only saving grace that I have at this point is being in the West Division where I am still only two games um, out from the number three seed uh, with yep. eight, with eight weeks left. And it's looking like the West Division is basically uh, the teams that are at the top of the West Division are basically at the bottom of the pile. So you have, if you're in the West Division, you're probably going to have to make the top three in the West in order to get into the playoffs. Otherwise, right, like the wild card teams on the East side are just looking good right now. Yeah, it is looking. I mean, it's, there's still time for that to change, but I agree. It's likely um, top five in the East and top three in the West for the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, for the game we uh, talked about earlier, uh, Seattle Felix, if he didn't win that game, he would have been three and three, and there would have been four teams in the West side tied at three and three or with that record. And the one at the in the fourth slot would still be behind – the two wild cards on the east side. So yeah. something to keep in mind going forward. I mean, that could be a, the trend that we see later on uh, when we get to the end of the regular season. Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be uh, changing much. You, you expect separation over time, but it seems to just be condensing. So uh, it looks like I kind of jumped the gun because that was one of my takeaways. Oh, so yeah. I guess I... Guess I uh, out. <laughs> okay, go for it, man. Almost every year, there's like a player that, uh, you know, one of the big waiver wire pickups that uh, ends up being somebody. And I, I think that player's still out there somewhere. They might not even, you know, be on anybody's radar yet. But um, like you're saying, everyone's getting injured. There's a lot of backfields and shambles, and uh, a lot of people need running backs. So um, I think it's, uh, there's, the waiver wire is going to yield a lot more than it has been so far this season. Okay. I think there's going to be some new potential. So this sounds a little ominous because of the mere fact that at least as of now, which we're recording this on Tuesday night, you are in the number two priority slot on the waivers. 
So that is right. Second, to like Nabil was saying, it it matters who's ahead of you and whether or not you think that person is going to make a move or not. And, and the uh, person ahead of you is Lisa. <laughs> yep. So effectively, I'm like first pick on the waiver wire. Are you going to use it tonight? Um, definitely, maybe. Okay. All right. You heard it here mm-hmm. first, and by the time people see this recording, they'll know anyway. They will. They will. I don't think so because I have a cup. I have enough running backs on my bench to where I don't need to yet. But we'll see. So great job, James. Thank you, and uh, God bless you. And uh, on to week seven. Yeah, you too, cuz. Uh, thanks, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight, Nabs. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>